And we're going to jump into a new section, section two, which is about configuring a Git environment. So in this particular video, we're hoping to get across to you and have you learn uh, about the Git clients that are available. There's some free and paid for clients available. Most people are going to use command line, but there are some folks that want to have a user interface. So they're going to actually install a client to work with Git, and that's fine. Um, there's a few paid for and free ones that are out there, and we're going to discuss just a couple of those. But then we'll also show you some resources where you can go and look at all the different ones that are available. Next, we're going to move on to you setting up your user settings for Git, um, and then actually how do you configure your user preferences, things like email address and things like that. And so we'll talk to some of that. And then lastly, we have the Git repo. We're going to set up a repo so we can actually start working with Git. So up until now, we've been talking a lot about concepts and theory, and there's not much we can demo when we're talking about that. For example, we're talking about the Git internals or things like that. It's kind of hard to actually demo that. Uh, but now we're going to start going into actually using the tool. So we'll be able to jump into some demos now going forward on how we're going to work with Git. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about selecting a Git client. So we're going to go and configure our environment for Git. And one of the things we want to do is set up a Git client. Again, command line is a very great way to work with Git. And a lot of folks are going to use that. But there's our folks that are now more than ever that are using a Git client. And there's a few of them out there that we can talk to. So what will you learn in this particular video? We're going to discuss Git for Windows to start with. Then we're going to talk about Visual Studio as a client. Then we're going to look at some other tools that are available called Smart Git, Git Kraken, and Source Tree, amongst others that are available. And then lastly, we'll give you a resource, a link to the list of Git clients that are available, both free and uh, at a cost, and let you decide which ones you'd want to use. We just cover a few here because it gives us a, a good spattering of what's out there in the marketplace for you. So the first thing we want to do is start off with Git for Windows. Git for Windows is a great tool. It's free. You can download it and install it rather quickly on your Windows machine. It includes Git GUI and Git Bash, which you can use to actually interact with the Git system. It's a very lightweight and your native set of tools that you can work with. And it brings the full feature set of the Git SEM to Windows. So you have all the features of Git right on your Windows machine without having to install anything else. Uh, and it gives you the uh, appropriate user interfaces that you would expect as a Git user of a system. So again, it's not going to be strictly working on a command prompt. There's going to be user interfaces and it's going to help folks who are just learning how to use Git to really explore Git more. And then again, you can actually graduate up to a different client if you wish at some point. But I know a lot of folks can work strictly out of uh, Git with the Git for Windows setup. Now that said, we're going to go in and talk about Visual Studio in the next section, but I wanted you to understand that you don't need to install Git for Windows if you're using the Visual Studio client. Okay, some people get confused because Visual Studio is installed on your Windows machine. Don't get confused about that. Git for Windows and Git Visual Studio are two separate clients you can use, and you don't have to install one or the other for both of them to work. You just install Git for Windows, and everything's going to work for you that you like you would expect, again, through the command line, through some user interfaces. So let's talk about Visual Studio for a second. What are some of the pros and cons around Visual Studio? Some of the pros for it are it's built in Git client. So if you're going to use Git in Team Foundation Server, that's when you use Visual Studio is when you're using Git Team Foundation Server or VSTS, their cloud version. You can then use Visual Studio as your client. But again, you're going to have to uh, commit yourself to that particular platform. Again, it works seamlessly with the tools, though, so it works really well. Some of the downsides to that are some of the cons are that it's going to require you to have VSTS or TFS and it's going to require you to have a license. So let's talk about Visual Studio for a second. Visual Studio can be used as a Git client if you're adopting the TFS or VSTS platform. So some of the pros of using Visual Studio is it's a built-in client. It works very well with Git, uh, in, in, but you have to, again, submit yourself to the TFS, Visual Studio TFS, or uh, Team Services platform in order to work with it. So um, you can also use it for working with GitHub um, if you want. So if you don't buy into the 
platform of VSTS or TFS, you can actually tie it into GitHub, for example, and use it that way. So either way, you can do it. But again, you're tying yourself into the Visual Studio ecosystem, and a lot of people may not be comfortable there. But again, it's a great client if we're working with Team Foundation Server or VSTS, and it's a fantastic client if we're going to work with GitHub. Uh, the next one is SmartKit. And some of the pros to SmartKit uh, are it's got this uncluttered UI that's very easy to use. It offers out of the box Git flow support. So again, if Git flow support is important to you, I know we use it when I use Git and I use Git with Team Foundation Server a lot. That's when um, you can implement Git flow there also. Git flow is the way in which we develop with. And so basically what that means is I have a, a master and then I have a develop branch. And then off my develop branch, I have feature branches uh, for each feature that I'm going to work on. And that's normally the Git flow process. And then you have hot fixes, obviously, and releases. So some of the other uh, things that are great about it is um, uh, it's got embedded difference viewer. So diffing files, for example, it's all embedded into um, tool smart Git. Uh, the cons are basically that uh, some of the Git functionality has been renamed. And by renamed, it makes it confusing for you to understand like what I'm supposed to be doing. If, if I rename like commit to check in or something to that effect, it kind of confuses people. So again, there are some functions and that have been renamed in Git. So you want are in, in smart Git and that are going to apply to Git and you want to make sure you understand those. Uh, it's hard to see which repos have committed changes at a glance. So again, if it's important to you, you want to get an overview of your repos and see what's committed, what's not committed. Uh, if there's any changes that are available to be committed, uh, you're not going to see it as well with Git, Smart Git. And also, if you want to clean up, they have an auto cleanup feature, that, but it consumes a ton of resources. So if you don't have the resources, um, it could tie up your machine pretty heavily, you know. So it's going to take a lot of CPU and a lot of RAM to actually get this thing to clean up. So you just want to keep those things in mind. All the tools we talk about today are going to be really good for Git. Um, again, it's just what's important to you in terms of the functionality. The next one's Git Kraken. Some of the pros to Git Kraken are that, again, it has out of the box Git flow support. It's very cross platform. So again, I can use it on Mac, Linux, Windows. Free version is available. So again, if I want to use the free version, I can, but there's a caveat. The free version is not allowed for commercial use. So maybe my personal development projects, it'd be great for that. Otherwise I have to pay for Git Kraken. Uh, which is I'm around $75 or $80 or something like that to use it. And if you want to use it in a commercial environment, you'd have to pay for it. Uh, some of the downsides are you got to log into the Git Kraken servers to use your free version if you want to use that version. It crashes once in a while and you can't multi-select files. And while that may not seem like a big deal, Let's say we have to go out and delete 50 files. How would you like to delete every one of them one at a time? Because you can't multi-select them. You have to delete one at a time. So again, keep that in mind when you're going to pick a tool like Git Kraken. So with that, let's move on to Source Tree. And Source Tree is the last one we're going to look at. And it supports Git, Mercurial, and Subversion. And it's very simple. Um, again, you can see it's a very simple interface there. Um, but yeah, it's very powerful. And it has great branch visualization features. So again, it's very informative, works really well, and you get a good indication of how your branches are going and set up and uh, what's related to what in your, in your branches through their visualization tool. Some of the cons are it requires an account uh, with SourceTree to install and use it. It can be sometimes slow. But also, it's unstable and has a terrible UI for some people. Some people say they don't really care for the UI too much. While the branch visualization is great, the actual user interface, how you work with it, um, is not that great. So, again, people, it's up to you, you know, look at it and decide for yourself. But some people say the UI is not that great. So, and user experience is not good at all. So then again, that's something you want to consider. And then again, it might be a little unstable too. So just be careful there. As of this recording though, um, you might see different versions coming out in the future that are going to make it more stable and better to work with. So with that, I'd like to go into some the resources that are available. This URL will take you out to the Git GUI downloads and lists out roughly 12 or 15 different GUI clients that are available for Git. Uh, again, we've only picked a few of them. 
Some are paid, some are free. Uh, go and see which ones you like the best and want to work with. Again, good old command line you can fall back on. There's no reason why we can't use good old command line with Git. Again, some people would rather have a GUI interface. I know when I'm working with Team Foundation Server, I really like Visual Studio's built-in tooling. And if I'm going to work with GitHub, I'm going to go to the Visual Studio tool set because I develop on the Visual Studio platform, so in the Microsoft platform. So again, uh, I want to make sure I, I'm staying with that. But again, you can use any tool you'd want to in your particular case. All right, so I'm here in Visual Studio, and we're going to look at Visual Studio as a Git client. Uh, you can see here on the right side, we have what we call the Team Explorer. Team Explorer has all the where all the functions and features in Team Found and Visual Studio Gar for when you're working with Team Foundation Server. But again, we don't have to have Team Foundation Server to work with GitHub. And so you can see here um, that this is a GitHub repo. Um, it says, Welcome to GitHub for Visual Studio. Uh, you can see down here we have um, a GitHub build demo project. And this one is actually in Team Services. So again, you have uh, the GitHub for Visual Studio up here. And then down here, it's asking us to clone the repo. So for example, I have a repo at this current URL in Team Foundation Server, but uh, I can actually put it in, by default, it goes to your users directory in on Windows. Uh, so it's in my users directory, source control, or it's user source, repos, and then the repo name. So it'll create a repo, the same thing as my project name, which is GitHub build demo. And then it'll recursively clone the submodules. We want to leave that so everything gets pulled down to the, and gets created um, for the repo. At this point, I can click clone, and it'll go out and actually clone my repo for me. It's going to, sometimes it'll ask me to, to log in. So we want to make sure we log in. So we're going to log in here. There we go. So, so there we are. We are in now created our repo and we are ready to go. And then from here, we can start to add in solutions and projects and all that type of stuff. So for example, let's say I open up a solution. So let's go in here and create a new solution. Um, we're going to do something real quick here. Nothing fancy. I just want to show you. So I'll go into my C sharp and I'll go into web. And I'll just create a, um, let's see here, a web application. And an empty one, web forms is fine. Okay, let's just create that. And what will happen is it'll go out and create this uh, project for me, but we're going to go back to Team Explorer and take a look at it in Team Explorer. Because now we can start to see here's the functionality that's available to us for Git in the Team Explorer window. So you can see things like changes, settings, branches, sync. Uh, we'll talk more about the settings later on when we get into other videos in, on user setup. But again, you can also use third-party command prompt tools that you can install. Uh, so again, uh, whatever works for you. You can also install the GitFlow extension by going into Tools, Extensions, and Updates. And you can actually go in here and look for online the GitFlow. And then you would just type in GitFlow and you would go out there and find the Git flow for Visual Studio 2017. I could download and install it. Then I have to shut down Visual Studio to let it create it and run. So with that, just wanted to show you kind of what was available to you in Team Explorer when you're using Visual Studio with Git. And here's some of the changes. You could list out all your changes. We could go into branches where you could actually create your branches, merge branches, rebase, things like that. Um, settings, like I said, we'll talk about later. And the synchronization with the main server, you know, with your uh, master. So again, we can do all that from here. So that's really it for working with Visual Studio and Git. Um, we uh, We'll go in and talk more about some of the tools that are available as we go through and setting up our users. But for the most part, we'll use Visual Studio Client as our Git client that we're going to work with going forward in this course. So with that, let's go wrap up. So with that, let's go over what we've talked about today and wrap up. Uh, we talked about Visual Studio as a Git client. We talked about our Smart Git, Git Kraken, and Source Tree as uh, other clients that are available for Git. And lastly, we talked about the resources where you can go and get more clients that are available for Git, both paid and free.